If you've been to the Dollar Tree recently, you've probably noticed that they have new patterns of peel and stick wallpaper available. And I have got some fun ideas on how to use them. I had this sign in my stash from the fall. It's shaped like a cutting board and I wanted to give it a makeover using the peel and stick wallpaper. I really love this butterfly pattern that they have out now. And when I went over to the sticker section in the Dollar Tree, I found blue butterfly stickers that coordinated really well with the wallpaper. On the back side of my cutting board, I started by taking my ruler and I measured about five inches up from the bottom. I used some pencil to create a line and then I took some washi tape or you could use painter's tape here. And I just covered up over where that line is so that it would give me a guide as to what section I needed to paint. Once my washi tape was in place, then I just used some chalk paint and I gave it two coats. I forgot to press record here, but I did cut a piece of that wallpaper down so that it was just a little bit bigger than the section I needed on the cutting board. And then I peeled the backer off and laid it down on the cutting board where I didn't paint. Once I had that in place, then I flipped it over and I used my little utility knife and I just cut all of the excess away. It was really hard to choose, but I picked four of the butterflies that I liked the most out of the sticker pack. Actually, a few of those are dragonflies too. And I I laid them out on the cutting board just so I could see how they would fit in the white area. I didn't press them down, I just laid them lightly so that I could get a good idea of the spacing. Once I liked how they were laid out, I wanted to make sure that these would stick really well, so I did go back through with a little bit of wet glue. I like to use the art glitter glue, but you could use Mod Podge or tacky glue here. And I just wanted to make sure they would stick down really well, so I did add some of that glue onto the back side before I laid them down permanently. Recently I was in Hobby Lobby and I found a bunch of ribbon rolls on clearance which I was so excited about. Give me a big thumbs up if you would be excited too. I grabbed one of the rolls that had blue and white stripes on it and using some hot glue I just glued it across the front where the white and the peel and stick wallpaper meet. I only kept my hot glue on the sides because I didn't want it to seep through the ribbon. Once I had it in place then I flipped the whole thing over and used more hot glue on the back to tuck the edges around. As a final touch for my cutting board, I gathered up a bunch of greenery that I had in my stash and using the hole at the top of the cutting board, I was able to determine where the center was. So I just started laying pieces of greenery in a cute little bundle along the center. And then I used that same blue and white striped ribbon to create a simple bow and I hot glued that on top. Peel and stick wallpaper really comes in handy when you don't have a ton of time to craft. From the plus section of my Dollar Tree, I grabbed a two pack of these 11 by 14 stretched canvases. I'm only gonna use one for today's project, so I'll save the other one for something else. I also went over to the Crafter Square section and I got one of their regular eight by 10 stretch canvases. And then in my stash, I had this wooden letter M. I think this might've came from Walmart, but it might've come from Michael's, I'm not sure. And it's about five inches high. I chose the letter M because that's what my last name started starts with, but you could use anything you'd like, or you don't even have to use a letter at all. You could put whatever you want in the center of your pictures. For my letter M, I just gave it two quick coats of white chalk paint. While my paint was drying, I cut my peel and stick wallpaper down so that I had two pieces, one that was one inch smaller than the smaller canvas. So for example, my eight by 10 canvas, I cut that piece of wallpaper down to seven by nine. And for the 11 by 14 canvas, I cut that piece down to 10 by 13. Now the back side of this wallpaper is pretty sticky, but I really wanted to make sure that it would stick well to this canvas material because of the coating that's on it. I wasn't sure how well that adhesive would hold up. So once I had my piece of wallpaper centered within my canvas, I'm using my art glitter glue here on the back side. 
just to make sure that it was more sticky. Once I had it in place, I flipped it over and burnished it down with my hand just to make sure that that glue had a chance to set and sink in. And it's easier to push it from the back side than from the front side because of how the canvas is stretched across the frame. So you can see here again with the bigger canvas, I'm doing the same thing. I just laid my peel and stick wallpaper on top of it and made sure that it was centered within the canvas. Then I lifted half of it up, added some of my art glitter glue to one side, laid the paper down, put a little more art glitter glue on the other side, and then I flipped the whole thing over to really give it a good press to make sure that that glue was nice and adhered down. Now that my paint is all dry, I'm just going to use hot glue to put everything together. So I put a generous amount on the back side of my letter M. I centered it within the smaller of the two canvases. And again, I made sure that I flipped it over and pressed it from the back side so that it would have a chance to set in place. And I think that looks pretty just how it is, but I think stacking the two canvases together really elevated the look a bit. So again, on the smaller canvas, I'm adding hot glue to the back side of the smaller one. And then I centered it within the bigger one. And once I had it centered, I flipped the whole thing over so that I could give it a press from the back side so that I wasn't putting any pressure on that canvas material. And like I said, you don't have to add a monogram to yours. I think another pretty option would be to create a small wreath and put that in the middle. stick wallpaper is a great way to customize a plain composition notebook. Now I wouldn't buy one at the Dollar Tree because they are $1.25 and at Walmart you can find them for under a dollar, especially during back to school sales. I already had a composition notebook in my stash because I love to make these to give as gifts and I also grabbed two of the sheets of the peel and stick wallpaper in this really pretty wood grain. To make this quick and easy for the first sheet of wallpaper since it does measure 11 by 16 I just put it in my paper trimmer and I cut it down to 8 inches so now I have two pieces that are 8 by 11. When I cover composition notebooks, I never wrap anything around the binding of the book because that's where you open and close it. And I'm always afraid it's going to get wrinkled and come apart. So I took some double sided tape and from where that binding ends on the cover, I just ran one piece of tape there just to add a little more security for when I'm placing down my wallpaper. After I took the backing off of my tape, then I peeled back some of the backing on the wallpaper. It comes in two sections. That's how they, they make it so it's a little bit easier to peel off. And you can see here, I'm just peeling back a little bit and folding that backer back so I'm only exposing part of the sticky side. Then I'm doing my best to center it across the front of the notebook, lining it up with that binding strip. And when I had it in place, I had a little overhang at the top and bottom, which is great for covering a notebook. So then I was able to peel off the backer slowly so that I could smooth it out as I was pulling it off and there were no bubbles as I stuck it down. Now you can see here that there's an overhang at the top, at the bottom, and at the side of the cover. And I'm just using a bone folder here to really burnish that wallpaper down to make sure that it has a good adhesion. Before I moved on to folding those edges in, I did want to take off some of the bulk at the corners. So with my scissors, I'm just cutting straight across the corner, leaving about a quarter of an inch from the cover. Once I had those corners cut off, then I could just fold my paper over to the inside. And don't worry, I know there's stuff printed on the inside cover of this notebook, but I'm going to cover that up later. So you can see here, I just started at the top and the bottom, and I folded those pieces down, and I smoothed them out with my bone folder. Then I got to the side section and folded that in also. Now you can see that leaves us with a sharp corner here and these notebook corners are rounded. So I'm, all I'm going to do is push down on that corner a bit so that I can see the shape a little bit better. And then I'm just going to go through with my scissors and I'm going to cut off the same shape of the notebook leaving a rounded corner on both sides. The process for covering the back cover was the same as the front. I did everything exactly the same on the back side that I did on the front side. And like I mentioned before, I do love to make these covered 
composition books to give as gifts. And it's a great way to customize it for whoever you're giving it to. You can put their name on it. You could put different quotes or different things that they like on the cover. You could decorate it any way that you think the recipient would like. I've also made a lot of these in the past for different craft fairs, and they've always been big sellers for me because you can get them fairly cheap during back to school sales. And then the materials that you use to cover them don't cost a lot. You don't have to charge a lot, which is something that a lot of people look for when they're at a craft fair. Since we are in July now, this is a good time to start thinking about Christmas because so many people are putting out Christmas in July videos. And even though this technically isn't a Christmas craft, this is something you could keep in mind if you wanted to give some handmade gifts for Christmas this year. And with the back to school sales starting now, you could stock up on these notebooks and get to work and start crafting now so that you're not so stressed for the holidays. Now that my front and back covers are done, I wanted to cut some pieces to cover up the inside of the covers. So I took some measurements on mine. Now I would say definitely measure for whatever notebook you're using because they're probably going to be all just a little bit different. For the one that I'm using, I ended up cutting a piece down to seven by nine and a half. But like I said, definitely measure your own notebook so that you know what kind of measurement you need to cover the inside. And you also don't want to place your ruler the whole way into the binding because you need a little bit of room for the cover to be able to open and close. I showed you those lines in the center of the wood grain there because as I'm cutting it down to nine and a half, I wanted to make sure that those lines stayed centered in my page. That's why I'm cutting two small pieces off of each end rather than just cutting it to nine and a half. But depending on what kind of pattern you're using, you probably don't have to be that particular. I just wanted to make sure that my lines stayed center. Before laying down my inside piece, I wanted to make sure that those corners would line up with the rounded corners. I didn't bother, you know, making it exact. I knew I just needed the, the corner to be a little bit rounded so that it would fit nice into the notebook corner. And the same thing like we did on the front, I just peeled back part of the backing. I lined it up on the inside. There's a small border that runs around the outside there. And then I peeled the rest of the backer off as I was smoothing it out so that I had a nice finished looked on the inside and then I used my bone folder again once I had it all stuck down so that I could give it a good burnish and make sure that the paper was nice and adhered and just like before the back cover is done the same as the front cover I repeated all the same steps just doing it on the back side now I don't know I know I don't do a whole lot of paper crafts here on my channel but it's something I really do enjoy doing you'll have to let me know in the comments if you're a paper crafter or if you're interested in paper crafting because I would definitely love to keep doing more paper craft videos because I have a ton of scrapbook paper in my stash that I'd like to start using up. There's a lot of options at the Dollar Tree for decorating these notebooks. They always have a big selection of stickers and rub-on transfers but I actually went to the greeting card section and I found this really cute greeting card with a typewriter on it that says choose happy. I just really loved the image and I thought it would look great on this notebook. On the inside of this greeting card, there's also a really nice message that I wanted to use somewhere else on my notebook too. I started by cutting the greeting card in half so that I could just work with the front cover to start. There was a lot of extra white space on this card, so I took a quick measurement and I just cut some of the excess off the bottom so that it wouldn't cover up too much of the front of my notebook. Once I had that cut down, then I moved on to a piece of black cardstock and I cut it about a quarter of an inch bigger going in both directions to act as a mat for underneath the image. This isn't really necessary because this does have a solid white background, but I do like to mat it. I think it just gives it a really nice look. Plus it kind of helps tie in the black binding on the notebook into the black mat border. I'm using the art glitter glue here to attach my image to my mat. You can see here that I rounded the corners of both of these. That's not necessary, but if you do have a corner rounder, I think it just gives it a little bit more interest. 
Now, one thing you want to keep in mind when you're decorating notebooks is that you don't want to add too much dimension to the front because you, as you open it and write on it, if there's a lot of beads or gems or anything like that on the front, it's going to kind of create an uneven surface. So as you're writing, that can be just a little bit annoying. So I would try to keep it as flat as possible on the front. And you can see here that image just looks so great with that wood grain on the cover. I also cut out that little quote that was on the inside of the card and I mounted that on some black cardstock and I'm just placing that at the bottom of the back cover. so much for coming to hang out with me again today. Let me know if you've seen these new patterns of peel and stick wallpaper in your local Dollar Tree. All right, everyone. I hope you have a great week and I'll talk to you in the next one.